One of the interesting things about testing the Honda State Line was going back to the Fury that we tested in March 2010. I opened up the photo set of the Fury and put images of the two bikes side by side. The first thing apparent was how the different incarnations of essentially the same machine had given me a different vibe for their photo shoots. The Fury took me to grunge and guerrilla art, while the VT 1300 CR ABS state line took me to Cornwall Park and Devonport. It's partly because of the name, angry versus stately, but there's also something quite different about the feel of the two machines. The main engineering differences are around the front end, where the state line's forks are shorter, although they are at a slightly steeper rate, 33 degrees, and they hold a 17-inch wheel with a higher profile tyre than the 21-inch hoop on the Fury. The upshot is the wheelbase on the new model is 24mm shorter, 1781mm, which seems to give better cornering clearance and more chuckability. Like the Fury, the best compliment you can pay the state line is how normal it rides for such a radically styled machine. I ended up doing a few things that the bike isn't actually designed for and it coped really well. One Kiwi rider assignment saw me dispatched to film a trials event which took in a few kilometres of dirt road and then back into town via one of my favourite twisty adventure bike test loops. There was no dramas doing either on the state line, it still has the radical metric cruiser cornering clearances, so it means you have to be a bit circumspect with entry speeds, lest you grind away the folding forward mounted foot peaks, but stability and road manners really are surprisingly normal. Aesthetically and style-wise, the state line is a cross between the Fury and the venerable VT750 Shadow. It's halfway between the wildness of the Fury and the cruiser standard VT. The state line has less open space than the Fury, and the sweeping tank now has a visible seam. The tank also now accommodates the instruments, relocated from the Fury's handlebars. The bars themselves I thought were perfect, they are wide and swept well back, and I found the riding position was pretty big man friendly, whilst the low saddle height of 678mm means it'll work for shorter legs too. The 311kg wet weight might be a consideration for some though. The other style differences for the Fury are the wheels with less spokes, while they still have a paint finish. I was a bit ambivalent about their looks, but then I consider how badly sweet rainwater can stain modern alloy finish wheels if you don't dry it off properly, and I thought mm, I'd probably just deal with the finish. The state line also features a blacked out engine and frame and slightly different bodywork treatments. The rear guard is larger and more rune like, and the seat is a one piece affair. Neither the Fury nor the state line's pillion accommodation were up to the co pilot's specs. They might be okay for a compact passenger or a kid, but like most of the class, it would need a small backrest to be viable. Pillion comfort isn't the reason to buy this type of bike anyway. It's about cruising and making the rider feel good, and that it does. Apart from the upcountry jaunts, I did a lot of city cruising and urban riding, doing deliveries and running errands for my business, and again I was struck by how normal everything is. The 16.5 litre fuel tank gave good range and it was pleasant and comfortable to be in the saddle for extended runs. The only real impediment is the slam rear end doesn't have an enormous suspension travel, but again that's typical of this class of bike. The 1312cc 52 degree V-twin pumps out around 70 horses and it's a really easy engine to live with. It's not vibration free, but nor is it excessive or annoying, it's just nice. The brakes are single 336mm discs with ABS and they're all it needs. The 5 speed gearbox and shaft drive are very sweet, even for a brand new unit like our press bike.
Overall, I enjoyed the state line. It's different and normal at the same time, whilst very pleasant to ride. It has typical Honda finish and fit, and for a vehicle costing 25,000 New Zealand dollars, you'd expect it to. As I say, it turned out to be somewhat different, yet somewhat the same machine as the Fury. Same horse, different colour, you ask? Well, not really. Same heart, different soul, maybe, if we're getting artsy. Ultimately, like the Fury, if you like this type of bike, it's a nice one of them. Bye, bye.